Hello and welcome back. So in this section, we've reviewed uh, various messaging options that we have available on Azure. We've reviewed the event hubs and event groups, and we also saw why you should use events and when you should use the messaging pattern. And within messaging, we've, we've reviewed the service bus queues and topics. And in the previous couple of videos, we also created a sample queue and we also created a sample topic with a couple of subscription to them, right? So now let's go ahead and use one of the uh, tools that's available on GitHub uh, to access the, the data. So now let's go ahead and use one. So now let's go ahead and download one of the tools that's available on GitHub to access anything that's that's in the service bus queues or topics, right? So you might want to just just for the testing purpose, you may want to drop messages in the queues or topics and see different properties and access them, right? So there is this is available on the Azure portal as well, but there is a better tool available on GitHub by some other developers. So let's go ahead and download this tool. Make sure you follow the same instructions and do the same thing on your working machine so that you can also follow the further instructions in the upcoming lectures where we'll really make use of this tool. So the tool is called Service Bus Explorer. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to Google and search for Service Bus Explorer. Here you go, Service Bus Explorer. And the first result, usually it would be the first result, would be from GitHub. And this is this tool is by this this guy called Paolo Salvatore. And it's, it's an open source tool available right now on GitHub, right? So let's go ahead and click on that, where you, you can find all of the code bases here. So if you want to look at the code, you can download the code from the GitHub. But for the exercise purpose right now, we don't need the code. We just want to install the tool on our laptop, right? So let's go ahead and see the installation instruction. The first one, so there are a couple of options, right? You can use Chocolatey to install this tool and you can also use GitHub commands. So let's use the Chocolatey for now. And I'm assuming you don't have that installed, but if you have Chocolatey already installed on your, on your machine, then you can skip this step. Right. But for example, I don't have chocolate installed on this machine right now. So let's go ahead and first install chocolate and then use the choco command to download and install that service bus explorer. OK, so I'll click on this chocolate and I'll go to that page. And here they've given some instructions that we should follow before we install the tool. Right. So for the individual, let's first make sure that you have the PowerShell. Uh, with admin on your on your machine. So if you, by default on your Windows machine, if you're using for any kind of development, you should already have this. Okay. And then before running the actual command, uh, there is one more condition where you check the execution policy and make sure that it's not restricted. Okay. So if it returns restricted, then we run further another command. So let's go ahead and open PowerShell with admin rights and let's run the first command okay so it says remote signed it's not restricted but just to make sure we'll still run the second command where it's not just remote signed it should it should return as all signed right let's go back to powershell and yes to all that's done okay and let's run the first command again let's see if it has updated that all sign okay so we're good with this so now let's go ahead and run this command which would actually install the chocolatey tool on our machine and we'll use this to further install the service bus explorer so let's go ahead and paste that command and hit enter and it's going to download the chocolatey and set up on your machine. Okay, that's done. And now 
let's go back to the github page and here is the choco command to install the service bus explorer so let's copy this and let's run that command now when you when you run this it's going to actually download the the tool you know and set up the service bus explorer on your machine okay so now we can see that it's completely it has processed successfully and the tool is based is located here and it's a little bit it can get tricky here uh, if if you go to windows and search for the service bus explorer you know you, you won't see that as a result here right so let's make sure this path right so is in c program data and under chocolatey folder we should find the service bus explorer tool okay so let's go ahead and minimize this powershell let's go to the explorer and in the c okay so we don't see program data because it's hidden so you can go to view and click on show hidden items right so now you can see this program data folder and inside that the chocolatey folder and inside chocolate if you go to the bin okay in the bin you would see this service bus explorer okay so rather than coming to this path every time i'm just going to create a shortcut on my start menu so that i can access the service bus explorer quickly okay let's go ahead and close this tool page as well and let's also close the powershell we don't need that anymore right now and let's go ahead and open the service bus explorer okay so when you open this first time this is how it would look like and there's it doesn't show anything because it's not connected to any service bus right now okay so for us to access the service bus that we've created right we need the connection screen okay so let's go back to the azure portal and we are already on our service bus namespace the one that we created learn 360 right and then here on this on this menu settings you can see the shared access policies right this is where you would find the connection string okay so the one policy has already been defined which is root manage shared access key let's click on that okay so here basically you, you can create multiple policies right and you can you can define various level of access rights but this one by default it's created and it has all of the rights to send to listen and to manage the queues within the learn 360 service bus namespace and you can see there are a couple of keys right so first primary key and secondary primary key sorry secondary key and primary key and then you have two connection strings okay so let's just go ahead and copy this connection string and we'll use the same connection string to access this service bus from the service bus explorer okay so in this service bus explorer let's go to file and let's click on connect and here you have multiple options you can use uh, connection string and various type of connection strings right let's click on enter connection string and copy paste your connection string from your azure portal here okay and let's click on okay and it should now connect to the learn 360 service bus namespace and it should allow us to access the queues and topics uh, that we've created in the previous videos right so here we can see it has already connected let's go ahead and maximize this so if you remember in the previous videos we created a queue and we named it crm inbound queue right so here is that queue okay so there are zero messages right now and then in the other video we also created a topic called crm inbound topic but if you see the difference between this in the queue it shows the message count in the topic it doesn't show the message count if you recollect the difference in the topics we need subscribers right you need to create subscriptions and then in the subscriptions you can see the messages 
So let's expand this and we should see the subscription options and the two subscriptions that we created in this topic. Right? So I hope you uh, following these instructions closely and re-watch this video a couple of times if you need to, right? Pause this right now and make sure you install the service bus explorer. And even before that, if you not created the service bus on your Azure account, I strongly recommend do that and then install this service bus explorer on your machine. And let's make sure you are able to access your queues and topics, right? In the next video, we are going to create two separate, very basic logic apps. But with those logic apps, what we'll do is we'll read messages from the queue and then we'll send messages to the topic. And then those messages sent to the topic would be received by another logic app that subscribes to that topic, right? Stay tuned. See you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you.